Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Dogbug33, and welcome back to Tarts Run 4, the New Order Last Days of Europe, as the United States of America. Now, in the last video, we were invited to the North Sea Oil Conference, and basically kind of got cucked by Germany. Basically, they have all the oil, essentially. Um, but that's not... We're not too worried about that, because we are testing out our Orion project. And hopefully we will get working on Orion 1. Ooh, Yemen versus the Yemen Arab Democratic Republic. Some better arms. And civilian Middle East. Who'd have thunk? There we go. Um, I don't know what happened here because they uh, they have seemed to have pieced out. And I don't think I under I do not think I understand how or why that happened. But you know, I'm I'm not gonna question Russia. Um the Siberian Central Republic is doing an excellent job right now pushing through. And uh, we're supporting them, so that'll you know have a nice ally on our side of things, you know. Let's go ahead and look into the Middle East, see what's going on there. The Yemen Arab Republic versus Yemen. Oman will have something coming up soon. Ooh. This morning, Charles Manson was charged with first-degree murder in the aftermath of the terrifying killings that gripped the nation last March. Manson, a self proclaimed guru with delusions of grandeur and a history of violent sex crimes, met Ch Terry Metchler after a chance encounter with a Beach Boys member, Dennis Wilson. Wilson, hoping to aid Manson's dream of becoming a published folk musician, introduced him to Melcher, but they had a falling out due to Manson's violent and erratic behavior. Manson was already in LAPD custody for an unrelated petty crime when he was, when he was charged. His cult of followers, colloquially known as the family, earlier caught the, the FBI's attention for their bizarre very leader support of Francis Parker Yaki and preaching a bizarre synthesis of messianic apocalyptism and white supremacy. When questioned of his beliefs motivated the crime, Manson claimed that the murders were all personal and unrelated to his plans to wake the world. His prophesied race war for name taken from the Beach Boys song. According to Manson, Wilson adapted the lyrics to his song Ceased to Exist without crediting him and deserved retribution. A court date is set, and a conviction is all but guaranteed due to the band's member Mike Love agreement to testify after emerging from a coma last week. Love also announced that he and his bandmates Carl Wilson, Al Jardine, and Bruce Johnson unanimously agreed to dissolve a band out of respect to Brian and Dennis's memory. Well, thank God they caught him. Uh oh. It's all. It starts with a sudden blackout. 205 patrons on top of a stone wall stop and stare, stare in the sun dark. It's 1.20 a.m. outside. And bartenders reach for panic buttons as they try to calm their customers. The four undercover police officers curse as they fiddle with the switches, and the lights flicker back to life. The few who realize what is about to happen begin pushing their way through the crowds, but the moral squad have already locked down the window exits and are marching through the door. Flashlights in hand as they bust the biggest gay establishment in New York. The raid doesn't meet with a receptive crowd, to say the least. As officers lead those in women's clothing to the toilets many resist. It's common knowledge that those who get arrested by the moral squad as cross-dressing men don't make it out without bruises, spit-drenched faces, manhandling. Men with faces is lean and caked with makeup wrestle with their cuffs and spit on their captors. None of the bar's patrol have made it this far in a world which mostly despises them without getting a little rough around the edges. And when the man pushes them around, they push right back. But by the time the raid concludes, about 150 people are under arrest. But more are gathering in the late night darkness of the Big Apple, and a st storm is brewing that cannot be contained. Just a routine raid. Carry on. We're getting into sto uh, Stonewall right about now. Aircraft carriers. I want some frigates. I want just some destroyers, I think. That'll be good. <clears throat> I 
my fellow Americans, I stand before you today not with a dream, but with a sobering, waking knowledge of the injustice faced by millions of fellow citizens. I've heard it said to me that I am but a stargazing dreamer, ready to leave behind the worries of a world for dreams of a sky. Rest assured, this cannot be farther from the truth. While I myself and most members of my administration remain convinced of mankind's future among the stars, I am not and never have been blind to the fact that to reach the celestial plane, America must utilize its resources in such a way as to maximize human potential. With a sick and impoverished population, the United States will never be the best it can. Those of you who follow my campaign for office may recall my promise of true reform for true Americans, because a true American is not some executive sitting in his mansion and hatching ploys to increase his already considerable fortune, nor is it the woman who bars her children from sharing a school with those of a different appearance or creed. The true American is the old lady who gives her last penny to a child whose stomach rumbles with hunger, the man who volunteers of his time to patrol his burrow for criminals, those who stay with a sick or dying those who care about this great American community. This nation has a deficiency of empathy towards a downtrodden, one that only can be removed through a, such a sense of community. Today, my administration is proud to announce work towards one of our capstone promises, true pension reform. No longer will the old have to live in poverty or burden their, their children so they cannot work. A grand speech, a boost of uh, liberal democracy, hits us conservative and social democracy, I'll take that. How's the mission control? We still have another 15 days. The greatest LGBT riot in the history of the United States begins with a logistics problem. The Morals Police have grabbed 28 cases of beer and 19 kegs of hard liquor, but with the patrol vans occupied elsewhere, we have nowhere to put it. Instead, they keep the patrons on lockdown as the wagons arrive far too slowly for a police operation. The patrons, of course, are understandably upset, and those few not under arrest quickly join the crowds gathered outside of the building. Many of them know once the end dies, so does the living, living, breathing heart of gay culture in the greatest city in the world. Then they've lost everything to lose. As mafia members and patrons are loaded onto the wagon, many are still struggling. A lone voice breaks out. We shall overcome. A protest song written for the South African War finds receptive ears and another angry crowd facing another unwinnable fight. Growing cheers, growling, shouts of gay power echo from the streets for crowds, which have swelled to bursting in the streets. Stormé de l'Arvere falls to the floor struggling against four officers, and all hell breaks loose. Records are s unclear what exactly happened next, and a wave of anger of the mob pushes over police wagons, hurls bricks at the off officers retreating into Stonewall, presses garbage against the broken windows. Many of the most repressed members of a gay community lead the riot, the drag queens and the street boys, leading a wild, wild charge. Sylvia Rivera, notable drag queen, will remember it as the greatest night of her life. The doors of the inn are broken open with a battering ram. Officers pr inside prepare for a fire last stand. And then the police trucks arrive. Fire to the field, holy shit. Um... Let's turn our attention towards our neediest. In drafting the bill for pension reform for the country, the administration has discussed the possible expansion of the developing legislation. In particular, we've realized that a large group of good yet paying people have undergone have gone overlooked by the government and the people of the United States, but disabled citizens of America. Consistently disabled, overcome, Americans overcome the difficulties of their conditions, yet receive no care for the length, the length they go through to provide themselves and their families. Our administration seeks to reverse this injustice and will reach out to the disabled by, to bring them a brighter day by offering great pensions towards them and their families. Furthermore, increased benefits will provide care for the military veterans who, through force, fighting through fighting for their nation, were forced to come home with debilitating injuries, particularly from the Second World War, and will seek to provide for their families as well. Besides, it's what Annie would want, right? Insurrection in Oman. Oh, not another one. Huh. The initial reaction is one of rage. Officers bloody and coated with garbage and in wrecked with violence. And the fairies did it. The fairies! Violence explodes on the streets as police officers take the law into their own hands and hammer the rage into the defense 
onto the defenseless. The mob arrayed against them is far too gone to care. They form the rough outline of a cabaret chorus line and begin to sing. Their voices are piercing in the late night, and the police have had enough of being needless. They rush the line. Men and women get hammered with nightsticks as bedlam str spreads to the surrounding streets. Crowds run about round officers, laughing gaily, like warriors in the light of burning cars. By the time the riots come to an halt, Christopher Steele is blocked. Christopher Street is blocked. Half the cars aren't under overturn, and every garbage can for a mile around has been emptied into the streets. Witness described an odd beauty to the refuse strewn streets, like a river of broken toys. Of course, the streets aren't the only thing breaking in the news. All throughout the next day, crowds gawk at the burned out shell of Stonewall, and when the next night comes, they are joined by songwriters, poets, activists, and tourists, washing down the streets in a tide of exuberant energy. Allen Ginsberg notes on the way back that the guy that is there was so beautiful. They've lost that wounded look that the fuzz have all had ten years ago. An incredible night. Man, they were not messing around there. To far rebellion, can we send some volunteers to these guys, perhaps? I have a feeling I'm better off having Oman win than the, these other guys, so I'd rather support them. We got the better artillery going. How about some integrated circuit computing? Let's interfere with German operations in the area. Do we want to do that? Yeah. Let's train a new guy. And then let's research. There we got that done. Belly Buster. Miniature Compass. Let's do that. Okay, 43% repaired. Now, from my understanding, we need to make sure that, um... The best thing we can do is get it maxed out. We don't want to risk anything. So let's have some runs... Let's run some diagnostic stimulations. By running thousands of test simulations, we can predict everything that can go wrong even before it happens. So we have something going on, right? Hmm. The Pension Security Act seeks to build upon and expand early Social Security efforts by previous administrations to create a unified federal pension solution for all states and territories, while still adjusting the payout and input in relation to the state wage levels and cost of living. More importantly, it aims to isolate the pension system from the effects of market swings and inflation, so that somebody who pays towards their pension all their working life will not suddenly find themselves living in poverty. E upon retirement. If passed, all retirees will be guaranteed an at least somewhat comfortable lifestyle in their dotage. 25-41 Republicans support the bill. Plenty of room for compromise. No support from the far right, it seems. But let's talk to the Democrats. They are our party mates, after all. Oman is feed the, Om the Imamate of Oman. The Omamate. So if this doesn't... So we have to hold the vote. So we have to do the folk focus. Okay, I understand. Twenty-seven to forty-one. Okay. Work on Arnidius. Beautiful. A toast to our economists. Let's check the poverty right now. It's still going up. Well, it's still um going down, I should say. That's pretty good, actually. Now's our economy looking comparison. Oh my god, that is beautiful. That brings a tear to my eyes.
While the party as a whole has been fired up by President Glenn's speech early this week, cracks have started to show as usual. Younger progressive House members have contacted us to inquire about whether the administration could use an influence over their body to have a pension security bill amended in committee. Specifically, want a proviso requiring expanded pension benefits to those struggling with disabilities acquired over the course of their life. The administration has already been waiting whether to raise benefits for those born with disabilities, but this puts the president in a more difficult position. Progressives will be offended if we do not help all disabled, not just some, but at the same time, conservatives and free market party elements of the party are already critical enough of the proposal. They are unlikely to support aiding those who may aid poor per career choices or fail to act in a safe manner. The House Majority Leaders propose a way around this hurdle. The proposed writer for the bill was in was increased military pensions for disabled veterans, but has had NPP support. Should we fold the disabled veterans rider into the amendment for those disabled as well, we might just get enough NPP support to pass the bill even with defectors from our own party. This will greatly offend the conservatives as well. Should we do it? Okay, I'm not scared about... 29... If passed, this bill will increase pensions ever more. Our public support will increase. Will look better in the west, the steel belt in the north. South and Rockies will disapprove of it, but we must do it for the disabled. There we go. Next, let's go ahead and do our downtrodden. With the work our cabinet has put into developing the inclusion we need in this bill to bridge every gap in American empathy, the most unfortunate per persons our society have been notified be in being consistently overlooked looked by passed by presidents of history as well. Here we see the poor and destitute, those with little to no economic stability in their lives to begin with and suffer through their lives with the difficulties they're born in, rather than created for themselves. With respect and care to such individuals, the pros bill will include a section regarding the expansion of financial security nets and payments towards the Americans who find them themselves living in a great state of poverty. With this, we shall engage in a great fight against the issues of increasing poverty for the lives of American citizens across the country and provide for them a method of escaping the circumstances with which they have been dealt with. Let's go and start her up. Rear Admiral Dodge has gathered the most of the command staff at the meeting room, delivering them um, the reports he received hours ago. Their small post at Kodiak was the closest and first station to hear news from the USS Barcelona about the Japanese submarine following their course. The first time since being dodged in or for the time being dodged an order destroyer to maintain course and send out an alert to every other ship in Alaskan waters. The men present were a mix of Coast Guard and Navy officers, along with the two technicians working communications where the destroyer reported in. Dodgen was brief with them. The ship was not only falling with the Vaseline, but in American waters. The officers looked at him in silent terror, as the possibilities of what the submarine was up to ran for every man's, man's head. Had the Sa S Japanese simply gotten lost, or was it the start of something sinister? And what could be done short of waiting for the submarine to attack? Dodgen simply suggested sending another ship and hoped the Japanese got the message to turn back. A lone wolf can be scared e off easier than a whole pack. Uh oh. I haven't had this event before. I've never gotten this far in the game, so I don't know what's going to happen next. Okay, so they're back at war again. The man f sitting by the radar displayed wa watch as two ships followed every each other. The Queen Fisher further away but moving fast. Every listening post and attendance station had been put on high alert for any indication of more Japanese warships. He looked over the screen next to him, the technician shaking his head as the situation remained stag stagnant. As he went up to f smoke a cigarette, his display showed an unidentified ship, distant to the ba bass alone and this Japanese submarine, but approaching the coast nonetheless. Boss... Got something heading our way. Stuffing his pack into his jacket pocket, he stayed to view another. Uh, another. Then three more dots crossed into American waters. A column of ships. <sighs> Fuck, it's a whole squadron. Call Anchorage up now! Fall eyes on the blips. This is no, no longer something the Navy could handle on its own. More ships will be needed. <sighs> Get me through to Washington. There's an entire Japanese fleet on the way. Uh oh.
The Ring Age submarine had been stripped clean of everything once the crew surrendered to the dozen of American warships pursuing them across the Pacific coast. Like flies on a hunk of metal, the CIN Coast Guard closed off a dark dockyard the rogue submarine was stationed in. What the engineers found inside was no like no other. It was I was a captain and ordered some codes and machines destroyed, but Vector's sub was the fine American intelligence they always wanted. A working Japanese submarine outfit with all the best their Navy could afford. With the help of a few defectors willing to detail what the translators missed out, the compiled report will give the United States Navy a new insight into its enemy across the globe, perhaps get the edge needed to prevent another incident like this from happening again. <sighs> Heaven forbid they had called our bluff. We've grown more unified as a nation. That was kind of confusing, but okay. The man on the stage seemed to warp and then reform as he fell the strings of his guitar. Dozens of our men and women should stirless this behind uh, besides Eli's with sharp, echoing sound of an electronic to call to cook get the fuck guitar colored the morning air. With a rushes of noise and yells that seemed to blend into the background, in the same way that Eli f almost felt himself blend into the hot, faceless mass of the crowds. People weren't quite so into it, as they had been a few days ago, on Friday, but when Jimi Hendrix strummed that Alablat bastard work of art, silently like a shadow. The works, the notes continued, and Eli felt his skin vibrate with goosebumps. Muscles wanted to pulse and groove and waves with the rhythm, but it was already clear that this was not dancing music. He could almost hear the lyrics in his head, even though Jimmy wasn't singing. The words of a star spangled banner seemed to be crushed or torn down by Jimmy's occasional bouts of speed, following by echoing, drawn out chords. Eli wasn't entirely sure how much of his extraordinary performance was imagined, but he felt every little twist and riff ripple in his head and his soul. Jamie switched from somber, more connected feeling chords into wild riffs and solos seemingly on a whim. Eli's eyes remained locked on the guitarist, and the rest of the world seemed to just melt away in whirls of color. Finally, it seemed like the hard and fast playing was beginning to morph into something more akin to what Eli knew and loved. Eli prayed that the stars and stripes he saw in his mind's eye would never leave. He loved his country, he loved this place, and he hoped he would never have to leave. Far out, man. I'm curious, can we send these guys volunteers? Send volunteers, nope. Okay, we got this figured out. Can prepare the launch pad by safely Upgrading the launch pad to fit a rocket, we can safely assure liftoff. Okay, I'm gonna 29 center NPP, right. So 58. Yeah, 58 Republicans, 41 Democrats. We're doing. We're doing pretty well already. Our downtrodden. The board constitute a potential problem for the Pension Security Act. With low income, they will not be likely to. They will likely not be able to pay sufficiently pay into the program to such a degree that they could live a comfortable life in retirement. While the bill has already had a section adding ensuring that the welfare payments for low-income households are exempted from the pen pension taxation that would further complicate their already troubled situation, that only worsens their situation they may face upon retirement. The progressive faction in the House has presented a package to amend sections and riders to the bill to address this issue. The amendments authorize the government to access welfare funds to pay pad the pension checks for low-income pensioners, while the rider expand said welfare budgets by increasing social safety nets, unemployment benefits, and social assistance programs. In the state, adding this package to this bill would be a courageous decision. Conservatives and business lobby alike are likely to howl bloody murder, or at least Bukharanist mania, at expanding welfare via rider. But like with the disability provisions, there is a chance we may be aided by the NPP defectors and still pass the bill. Can we risk it? I think we absolutely can. We must, for the true Americans. Yeah, we got 58, 70 people approving of it. Now it's time to get the bill through. With the provisions 
towards the legislation finalized, our administration will send the bill towards the Congress. Although many in our nation believe such a bill would be an insult towards the Treasury, we will do all we can to make sure the bill is secured for less fortunate in our society. We as Americans are promised to live within a nation that champions freedom, justice, prosperity, and progress. This bill will have we have composed will only expand upon the possibilities of living in a greater and empathetic society. The elderly, the disabled, and the less fortunate are Americans all the same, and thus deserve the rights to a fair society for them, and thus will enjoy a substantial increase in their provisions for all that they have equally suffered. Though many in the House and Senate believe this bill to be far too expensive and a political distraction from the President's extreme fascination with space, we must do what we can for our nation. There we go. The Pension Security Act. Nope. It's looking good for Oman right now. The Yemen Arab Republic has won, though they always kind of seem to. Alright, where is... Public approval is 52%. That's hiring technicians. Hiring some extra staff. Help to staff our mission. Control would make sure we are able to react to any challenge. We're 80% prepared. We'll go ahead and pass through the bill. And we'll see what happens. England purchases B-52s. Mr. President, something unusual going on with England's purchasing orders seems to have taken an interest in the B-52s. One of the ro very Royal Air Force personnel, a na man named Arthur Harris, was on a trip to Seattle a few months ago. He was very enthusiastic about the tr strato fortresses. He apparently convinced Jellicoe to invest in the idea, and they approached Boeing for an offer. Boeing was completely happy with it and agreed. Now the State Department has to deal with both a major ally and one of our biggest companies pushing for the deal. In wars, Boeing's got some senators to press for the deal, including Scoop and some others on the Foreign Affairs Committee. Of course, we had to approve a deal for kind of pressure. There are concerns about the officers, rather harsh language, particularly when it came to German civilians, but we figure that it's mostly a blunder anyway. Although I'll admit, the fact that these can carry a nuclear payload makes me a bit nervous. <sighs> Harris is going to do it again, isn't he? Bomber oh, Harris. Oi, mate, you got a license for that nuke. And we got Republicans, we got not enough Democrats, but a fair portion of them. And let me look at the Senate GUI. Order collapses in Egypt. Okay. Uh, can we do anything to help people in Egypt? It doesn't seem like it. ERC, Muslim Blood Brotherhood. Like, who do you want to support here? We did it! Despite the internal agreements in the party, the bill has passed the House and is almost guaranteed to pass the Senate. Finally, we can have taken some small steps towards a fair and just America, one in which the old can live worthy lives. Voters of North and Steel Bill will approve of this. Voters from the South, the Rockies, and the West will disapprove of this for whatever reason. A property societal development will begin to improve. We'll get some change already with the changes. And we'll have new expenses costing 1% of our current GDP. Bingo in Florida, anyone? Let's do the new NASA. Yeah, let's do the new NASA. NASA's left been left adrift and rudderless for years, thanks to the short-sighted views of previous administrations since we lost the space race, cutting funding and pushing manpower to other areas. But that was just the first battle, not the whole war. There is so much to discover among the stars, so much to explore, that we shouldn't be confining ourselves to simply being second best. With massive new fundings, we can rebuild a space program and push past the boundaries. It's time to go where no man has gone before. Let's see, um, 
the 1969 MLB season was drawing to a close as the dominant Baltimore Orioles, America League champions, squared off against the National League champions, the New York Mets. Both teams had swept their opponents in the league's championship and what were set to face in this year's World Series. The 1969 Baltimore Orioles squad had been considered one of the greatest baseball teams in MLB history, led by slugger Frank Robinson, pitcher James... Jim Palmer, as the team won 109 games and lost only 53. On the other hand, the Mets finally achieved their first ever winning season this year, led by coach Yogi Berra and pitcher Nolan Ryland. The mid-October matchup would go down as one of the most shocking upsets in hist the history of baseball. The talented Baltimore team routed the Mets 4-1 on October 11th, but the Mets stormed back and won the final four games of the championship, defeating the Orioles 5-3 tonight in front of 57,000 fans. The team was quickly dubbed the Miracle Mets for its outstanding play against a formidable rival. It's the Mets' first World Series pennant. A, a victory for the history books. It seems like finally change of capital in um here because that was never that never made sense to me why the capital was like in Luxor. King of Egypt is taken. Egypt Revolutionary Commit and Council is one. Can we send volunteers to these guys? No. Weapons improvements. Let's do some. Fuck, what do you want to do? Maybe elite forces. That might be a good idea. Oh, auto save. Yep. Okay, dong was in t taken. <laughs> dong. Public of Sudan is hanging on. Can we do anything else with this? I don't want to... I don't want to launch it yet. No, you have to be very, very careful with that, because if it fails... There we go, new expertise and new operative. Beautiful. If it fails, it's not good for, for our purposes. Spokesman for the Kennedy family, he reports today that former President Joseph P. Kennedy passed away at his Massachusetts home at 81. He survived by his wife and six children. The elder Kennedy leaves behind a complicated legacy. His success at Patriarch of the Kennedy Dynasty was substantial, as his sons John, Robert, and Edward all made names for himself in the political sphere. The elder Kennedy was elected president in 1932 and presided over the slow recovery of the United States from the Great Depression. Despite serious criticism for his non interventionist policy, both in economic and porn's foreign policy, he won a second term in 1936. Wait, I thought it was... No, I thought he won in 36. Hold on. The second term was mainly defined by Kennedy's continued reluctance to intervene in the European war and failure to fully prepare the United States for global power projections against Japan or Germany. Kennedy was a such source of much criticism in the aftermath of his presidency, with which only increased after the failed intervention in England and the signing of the Kagi Accords by his successor, Harry Truman. The Democrats would not hold the White House for another two decades when his son, John F. Kennedy, succeeded the disgraced President Nix Richard Nixon. Kennedy had spent his years after the presidency retired from public life, having lost his son Joe Jr. in bombing raid over the Pacific, but he reemerged help with his old son's bid for the vice presidency. However, the elder Kennedy kept himself out of public eye due to widespread criticism of comments he made advocating detente with Germany to focus on confronting Japan and refused to help with his son Robert's presidential run in 1964. Regardless of how American and people remember him, Kennedy left a lasting mark on the nation's history. His family will most likely continue to have a major role in politics for the foreseeable future. His dynasty lives on. Man, I can only imagine what the event is like for um, if you have JFK still in power. You can buy some research points. Best and brightest. So once a time when applications join access outnumbered the available jobs by a factor of five to one, and the best and brightest of America would be excited, excitedly jumped to joining the space program. Now it's hard to fill all the positions, as there's more money prestige in the private sector for boring jobs like financial analysis and designing cars. We already get back into the space race when we need to get them back. Better wages is just part of the plan. We need to make it so that people let come willingly to bring new ideas, new perspectives. They need to know that they are going to make our world a better place by exploring the cosmos. 
I wonder if we can encourage private investment in that whole fucking... Now we got a new tech. President John Glenn walked into the newly renovated manned space craft station center in Houston, Texas, stepping back through the sparkling glass doors and trailed by several black-clad agents of the Secret Service, the astronaut turned president found himself greeted by his old friend, James Webb, administrator of NASA. Hello, James, the president said, smiling. The administrator reciprocated with a smile of his own. <laughs> a damn fine facility you let us build, John, he said. And, by God, a damn fine path it's going to car for us. Let me show you around. We've already got several projects in the works. The president and his entourage of guards followed administrator Webb through the vast halls of New Houston facility pointing out new projects along the way. So, down here we have planning rooms for future pro programs and technologies, namely the Orion Project, the Diana pro Program, and the Integral Launch and Reentry Vehicles. The President shrugged. I'm a, bit, I'm a bit out of loop these days, James. Why don't you fill me in? Well, Diana is the current plan for another attempt at the moon. In theory, we could figure out where Apollo went wrong and use that knowledge in future missions. The Reentry Vehicle Project, or the ILRV, is a current plan to, for a reusable space plane that we could use to get things into orbit at a lower cost, like satellites to spy on the Kraut's nips. Orion is, well, we want to launch heavy loads into space by using nuclear weapons as propulsions. And what's all of this leading up to, if you don't mind me asking? The administrator smiled, turning around and walking towards a seemingly nondescript door at the foreign pole. I was hoping you'd say that. You'd ask that. Reaching the blank door, he opened an inner followed by President Glenn inside. Inside, the room was poorly lit, but filled with bulky computers and desks, all manned by busy men and women. On the walls, illuminated maps of the Red Planet, glowed. Terrain and topographical maps of potential landing sites, Utopia Planitia, Thales Marineris, Elysium Platinia, and several others. We're already planning? Come on, John. Probably Webb. We've always been planning. It's just been a matter of funding. President Glenn inhaled deeply, gathering his thoughts. Well, you'll have as much of that as you need, and more. The Red Planet awaits. And there we go. Our man missions will improve. Okay. Huh. Man over machines might be a, the better one to go here. Liquid fuel. We're still not doing all the infrastructure. Right. Well, see, that's all. An, that's a nice goal, but let's work on other stuff. Uh, oh. Um. The Great Conspiracy, as it is known in Japan, has escalated into even more bloodshed and violence as rogue Imperial Japanese arm, army units have seized positions in the outskirts of Tokyo. Oh no. Has the Empire of Japan gone mad? We'll build some more civvy factories all across. Okay, we can buy up some blue blueprints. There we go. We'll increase our base preparedness for unmanned missions. Yeah. And we can actually expand payloads too which we'll go in and do which I don't think the numbers worked out there and that shouldn't have been the case but I'll take it hmm man what do we want to do um
man, there's a lot of stuff we can do, but... Let's go ahead and do a pathway to the sky. The greatest hurdle to reaching space is not gaining altitude. It's main it is attaining the speed necessary to maintain those altitudes. In reaching higher orbit, it it's higher orbits, such as that of the moon, require even higher speeds or increased quantities of propulsion. Whichever approach we decide on, we will need to continue our development of rocket technologies to get back on parity with the other superpowers. The capsule is critical to keep the astronauts alive. The avionics are necessary to direct the rocket, but the propulsion system is the most important part of the rocket to get it anywhere. We require an incredible amount of power to reach orbit and grow further. To go further, we must continue to refine our approach. Well, there we go. How's our economy doing? Annual deficits. Okay, yeah, now, there, here comes our, um, here come the deficits, okay. You new here, too? Asked for young, bookish man, sitting next to Dean on the NASA director meter meeting. Yep, got snatched up from Lockheed. It's NASA, how could I say no? <laughs> yeah, said a young man, saying, name's Brent Kelly, aerospace engineer. I just got in from North American Aviation. Really excited to be here in Houston with you all. Daniel Getzler, Aerospace 2. Maybe we'll be working together. Sure, wait, what is up on stage? We should probably quiet down. Brent Kelly's at? Let me look that up. Brent Kelly. E. Brent Kelly, is that? It might just be a coincidence. I was thinking of a, the uh, senator who just got elected here in America, uh, Mark Kelly, who was an astronaut. Sorry. Um, the auditorium went silent as a famous administrator of NASA stepped up to a podium in the far side of the room. He shuffled some papers around and just a microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, our organization and our nation is about to embark upon great journeys. Odysseys through the great void that surrounds our fragile world. You will develop the technologies required to launch such a mission. You will you have a, you have been acquired from all over the country, of all colors and creeds, to guide us towards untold discoveries. As such, I am honored to welcome all of you to our exceptional organization. Welcome to NASA. Glad to be here. I think we'll invest with some GDP. Crisis in Nanjing. Pray they survive. Ah. Hang on, Japan. Oh my god, um... They never seem to have a, a, a really good go of it, unfortunately. Oh, wait, I think we'll get a tech boost for that eventually. I don't want to do that quite yet. We'll do flexible automation techniques. What do we want to replace next? Advanced transport helis. Some boys are born, made to wave a flag. Raven Republic, it's feed of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Always interesting. The Levantine Kingdom is kind of holding out. Falka Sudan is doing fairly well, it seems. Which is nice to see. Anzani Liberation Front versus Anyanya. I don't know which one is the best there. Research gain efficient, uh, resource gain efficiency. That might be a good one. Pathway to stars for unmanned missions.
Hmm. Man, I don't know what to do next. Maybe go down here, I'm thinking. Oh, upgrade his facilities, lower cost, increase budget. Yeah, I think that's a good one. Uh, that's a good place to cut off, cut off ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, yeah, I should cut it here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you want to see more of this content in the future, go ahead and hit the subscribe button for more uploads every weekday, as well as every Saturday. If you have any comments, feedback, concerns, go ahead and leave in the comment section below. I read all the comments I get and appreciate any all feedback and comments you might have for me. If you want to see a few bucks away, I have a Patreon down link below. If you want to chat or play games, I have a Discord. And if you want to see me do a sort of stuff live, I have a Twitch, all of which are down link below. Thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. My name has been Douglas333, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.